All right. Thank you for bearing with me. Um, we just got kicked up. We are back to talk about some science. So seventh grade science. We are doing uh, invertebrate diversity today. Uh, I am Ms. Bike. If you do not know me yet, I am so happy that you guys are here. We are going to have an amazing day talking all about invertebrates. Now, I know that you guys uh, earlier this year learned about um, invertebrates and vertebrates. So, um, just like always, I'm going to start you guys muted, and then if you have a question, uh, feel free to raise your hand and unmute yourself. Um, but please keep yourself muted unless you are actively asking a question. That way we are able to avoid all of that uh, harsh negative feedback that happens sometimes uh, when I'm talking and other people are unmuted. So we are going to get started, jump right into it, um, with some invertebrates. So can anyone remind me what an invertebrate is? No one knows? I hope someone knows. Anyone with a raised hand? Tell me what an invertebrate is. Yeah, Maisie, what's an invertebrate? An animal that doesn't have a spine. An animal that does not have a spine, no spine, no backbone, right? Awesome, thank you very much. So, uh, let's see. Awesome, thank you, Ice. Yes, an animal without a backbone, awesome. Like I said, you guys are free to uh, type in the chat your uh, responses as well. Um, and we are just going to jump into it. Um, I've got my nice board here. As you can see, we're doing biology. You can see the topic, invertebrate diversity. I am Ms. Bike, this is science. I drew a little test tube. Um, and I am excited to start on this adventure with you guys. So we are just going to jump right into it. And we are going to start talking about, uh, because before we can get into, actually, I'll ask you guys, have you guys gone over the um, classification system? Kingdom, phylum, no, no. Awesome, good, so we are gonna go right over that. So we are just gonna jump right into it with my lovely whiteboard right here. Good, 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 it's all clear. We're gonna start with the classification system. And again, if I'm ever going too fast, um, or if you need me to repeat anything, please let me know, I'm happy uh, to help you guys out with that. So classification system. Uh, we start with the kingdom. If anyone has ever heard of the animal kingdom, that is the kingdom animal, ooh, not animal, animalia, uh, and that is the first step. There are actually seven sort of levels of classification. Also, I must mention, please take notes for me. Um, I have uploaded onto the seventh grade Google Classroom uh, your guys' homework for the week, um, and so I would really love if you guys took notes, and then at the end, you can either email them to me, uh, I will make a spot, you can upload them on the Google Classroom, or if you're taking them by notes, or if you're taking your notes by hand, uh, you can take a picture and upload it to the Google Classroom. Uh, if you're taking them by hand, you can hold them up to the camera, uh, but I would really love to see some uh, proof at the end of class that you are taking notes. So if you want to email them to me, um, I will put my email in the chat later um, so you can see that. And then um, I will make a spot on everyone's Google Classroom so they can upload their notes if that's easier if you're doing it on a computer. Um, or you can email them to me, whatever is easiest, but I request that you guys please uh, take notes so that you are able to complete your homework uh, that is due um, at the end of the week, and the homework is on your Google Classroom. Uh, if you are not on the Google Classroom, I will put the code um, in our chat um, so that you can log on and get into the lovely seventh grade class because that is where all of your uh, assignments are going to be, and that is where um, we are going to be able to, um, there we go, there's the chat for the seventh grade uh, Google Classroom. Hopefully you can log on to that and um, get on with all of your assignments, because that is where your teachers are posting, whoops, announcements, um, and all sorts of useful, awesome information. So I'm going to go back to my lovely whiteboard, and we are going to get started again with our classification system. So the first level is going to be kingdom. And uh, this is basically a way that we classify all living things. So if you're an animal, you are in the kingdom animalia. That is the animal kingdom. If you have ever heard that reference, that is what we are talking about. We've got the animal kingdom. Now after the kingdom, we get into the phylum. Phylum, right? So that's the next level of classification. And basically, as we go down this list, um, each previous 
category is split into smaller categories in the next one. So each kingdom, uh, right, the kingdom is split into phylums, and each phylum is split into classes, and each class is split into orders. Um, and so basically, as we go down the seven layers, each one gets more specific. And then by the time we get down to the species, it is talking about one specific animal at a time. So this week, we are going to be going over many different phylums because uh, vertebrates are only in one phylum, and there are over 30 phylums. So vertebrates are all in phylum chordata. I'll make it a little longer so you guys can see it, are in the phylum chordata. The other 30 phyla, phyla, that's the plural of phylum, the other 30 phyla are all invertebrates. Now, invertebrates are also uh, in chordata, but they have many, many of their own uh, phyla, which is super neat. And that is basically what we're going to be looking at this week are all of the different phyla that um, invertebrates are a part of, how many species are in each one, what their characteristics are, um, how we're able to tell them apart, the size they are, and all sorts of wonderful, awesome scientific information. So in your notes, um, I need you guys to at least have the seven layers down. And then if you want to put some extra uh, information in as well, you can. So phylum uh, is the next layer down after the phylum. Like I said, we're going into class, uh, just like you are in class right now. Um, each phylum is split into smaller classes. Um, so for example, the chordata, right, the phylum that all the vertebrates are in, they split into uh, mammals, bony fish, fish with cartilage, uh, amphibians, reptiles, birds, right, that sort of thing. So each sort of big broad category of types of animals has their own specific class, right? So we're in the third level, so we're getting a little more specific, but we're still sort of very broad, right? Um, third level of classification, right? So then after class, we get into, in my other class, I gave examples. Um, I typed out the examples of what things were split into, sort of the chordata phylum and how it gets more specific. Um, would that help you guys if I typed it out or would that just make it more confusing? Anyone? Would you like me to type out my examples? Or are you okay if I just sort of speak them to you? Anyone could unmute yourself and let me know. Answer. Uh, okay, I will just say them then because I think it was confusing to have all of that on there for my other class. So after the class, we go down to the fourth level, which is the order. And so all the classes are split into orders. So like we said, um, all of the chordata phylum split into classes of mammals, reptiles, amphibians, and that sort. So the class of mammals is then further split into orders of carnivora, which I'm sure we can hopefully guess what those are, um, carnivores, uh, primates, um, and uh, rodentia, rodents, right, rodent, rodent, um, and then artiodactyla, which <laughs> is not a pterodactyl. Um, artiodactyla is all of those uh, lovely even hoofed animals. Um, Goats, cows, sheep, um, moose, all those lovely um, even-toed animals um, with hooves and stuff. Um, those are the artiodactyla, and those are different orders of mammals, right? So the mammals we split into even more specific categories, and those are orders. Then after the order, we get into the uh, family. Now, just like you are in sort of a smaller family unit, right, different than your class, right, your class is bigger than your family um, for most of you. And so uh, that, right, that's how we remember which one's bigger. Um, family is the what, fourth, no, nope, fifth level um, of classification. And the family, basically, so the carnivora, right, carnivores are split into, like, the dogs, the cats, the bears. Uh, the weasels, right, um, and a few others. So they get even more specific, right? We go from mammals to carnivores to dogs, right? And that's where you get hyenas, domestic dogs, wolves, and all sorts of um, lovely animals in there. So we get a little more specific. We go to the family. Now after the family, 
we get the genus. And the genus is the first part of a, each animal's scientific name. So if you've ever seen uh, those lovely two words in italics next to an animal's name, that would be the scientific name. Um, and the first word is going to be the genus, and the second word is going to be the species, which is the last level. So genus is first word of scientific name of an animal, and then the species is going to be second word of scientific name of an animal. Uh, species is in Latin. Um, that way it is easier for scientists to uh, keep it universal because Latin is a very scholarly language um, and many scientists around the world study it so they're able to understand animal names um, because if you put all the animal names in French then it's going to isolate a lot of people but Latin um, since it is a dead language it's not going to isolate anyone it's going to um, and there's also a lot of Latin roots in many languages and so if you know Latin then you know it's a lot easier to learn languages it's a lot easier to uh, learn some more scientific things. Latin just opens up a whole lot of doors for people. So species is the last one. So your scientific name is going to be, whoop, that's wrong. Scientific, well, name is going to be genus and then the species. There we go. So that is going to be your scientific name. Uh, right, so that is how we are going to categorize things genus and then the species name and that is our lovely classification system so this week we are going to be looking at a bunch of different um phyla oops phyla and phyla is the plural of um phylum right so phyla is the plural of phylum phyla right so we've got phyla which is the plural of phylum. Uh, so we're gonna be looking at many different phyla this week and learning about them, what makes them unique, uh, what kind of animals are in them, uh, and all sorts of lovely, awesome information. We're gonna learn how many species are in each one. And like I said, I've already uploaded y'all's uh, homework for this week onto the Google Classrooms. It is in your seventh grade Google Classroom. Um, and I put the code in the chat, so all of you should be able to access that. Uh, and then you'll be able to turn it in on there and I'll be able to look at it, and I'm very excited. So, uh, who still needs time to take down my classification notes? Uh, okay, well, I'll give you guys a little more time to finish up these notes. Uh, okay, awesome, awesome. So I will not turn it off yet. We will continue going. Um, let's see. Okay, so like I said, we will be looking at different, um, oops, classification, there we go. We will be looking at different phyla of invertebrates. Uh, does anyone want to give me any examples of uh, invertebrates to uh, start us off? Anyone think of any to share with us? No, nope, no one knows any invertebrates. Okay, well, don't worry, we will learn about them. Alrighty. Some examples of invertebrates could be maybe an octopus, maybe a snail, maybe an earthworm, right? All sorts of, whoops, awesome. Uh, a jellyfish, yes, good. Jellyfish, very good. Um, good, 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 all right. Let me get rid of that red line that I accidentally made, and we are going to, um, I'm just gonna jump right into it, right? So the first phyla we are going to be learning about is called periphera. And periphera is pretty neat um, because there are 5,500 species in this uh, phylum. Phylum. There we go. So there's 5,500 species in this phylum. Oh, do you know what I forgot to tell you? Is that invertebrates make up 95% of um, animal species, right? So they are, whoa, that's giant. 
uh oh i lost it 95 percent of animal species right so uh wow that's really not working for me okay 95 percent of animal species are going to be uh animal species are invertebrates i know you some of you can't see all that so i'm going to move this uh, so we can see all of it hopefully there we go there we go there's your fun fact 95 percent of all animal species are invertebrates and that is pretty neat if i do say so myself i am pretty excited um because there are so many for us to learn about we could fill so many weeks of it but unfortunately we only have this one week so we will make the most of it we will do our best and we will learn as much as we possibly can about our lovely uh invertebrates so definitely make sure you have that in your notes that will help you a little bit later um uh yes i can put the google classroom code again in the chat um we are going to whoops let me do this um we're just going to turn the chat off for now because it is not completely being used for respectful things. And so it's off. There is the code again for Jaden. Um, so if you have a question, just raise your hand and holler at me. Don't holler at me. Raise your hand and ask me, please, um, uh, your question. And uh, does anyone still need my classification notes? Anyone still writing down our seven layers of classification? Or can I get rid of those? All right, I'm going to start by getting rid of them one by one. So, right, there's that. Um, and we are going to erase that. Okay, so we are learning about Perfora, right? That is 5,500 uh, species in the phylum, different species. So, cool thing about that is that you might know them by a different name. So, these guys are informally called sponges. You ever heard of a sea sponge? Maybe, maybe, yeah, right? Sea sponge is periphera, right? So they are informally known as sponges, often underwater. Um, and they also are immobile, right? They don't move. Immobile invertebrates, right? No backbone. Can't move. But there's 5,500 different species of them, which is very many. And these guys... They actually are multicellular, which means what? Anyone want to help me out? Multicellular means? Anyone think about it? Multicellular. What does multicellular mean? Nathan, what do you think multicellular means? They have multiple cells. They have multiple cells, right? More than one cells, right? It's pretty self-explanatory. Thank you. So, uh, multicellular organisms with pores and channels uh, in their body that allow water to go through them. So that is um, the way they exist is they don't really have any formal systems. They just have pores and channels, pores, right? Just like holes in them, channels, things that water can go through. Um, and that is sort of uh, how they exist, right? How they live. They stay in one spot, which means if they're staying in one spot, they definitely can't like go and chase after their prey, right? So what they do is they are called suspension feeders, which means they suspend themselves in one spot, right? They're in one spot and they just sort of catch in those pores and those channels, they catch whatever organisms um, and, you know, obviously food and things, um, they catch it in their pores and that is how they uh, feed themselves. They're suspension feeders. So any little plankton, all sorts of lovely things they catch. They are caught in the multicellular pores and channels, just like things are caught in a spider's web, things are caught in a sponge of pores, um, and that is how they feed themselves. They are suspension feeders, which is very exciting. They're actually one of the oldest animal groups out there. Very old, these sponges. And so, that is pretty neat. And I actually have some pictures um, to show you guys um, in a little bit of a few different types of sponges. And that is going to be pretty fun. I'm excited for that. Get rid of that too. Awesome. We're going to get rid of this. 
So we are looking at periphera, then they are suspension feeders. Obviously, they are one of the oldest animal groups out there. They are immobile. Uh, obviously, they trap the particles. That's the suspension feeders. Um, and we're going to be looking at three different types, actually, um, of sponges uh, in our picture that I will show you guys um, after we are good with the notes, which I see some people still taking notes. And so I will give you guys a little bit longer uh, to take notes on the lovely periphera, which is a phylum, right? We're learning about different phylums. That's the second level of classification in the whole seven layers classification. We are working on the second layer. That's the phylum. And uh, the phylum we're looking at is periphera. And there are 5,500 species in this phylum. That's a lot of different species, very broad. They can't move. They're called sponges. Um, you might recognize some of them. Uh, I'm going to show you guys some pictures in just a moment. Um, and that is that. That is periphera. That is the first phylum of invertebrates we are going to go over. And we have many, many more to cover this week. So that is periphera. Those guys, I'm going to draw a little box around them. And the box is going to be purple because they're our first one. And as all of my kids know, and as all of you will learn, this bike loves purple. There we go. Lovely, right? So now we've got that section off. So we are able to move to the next one. I'm going to erase my little phyla right here just because that's just in the way. So we did periphery. And the next one we are going to learn about is called, you ready for it? You ready? Placozoa. Placozoa. Oh, we're going to be a different color. We don't want to be red anymore. We want to be green. There we go. Placozoa. Also starts with a P, right? Placozoa, porifera, very alliterative, but definitely very, very different because, well, periphera has. 5,500 species. Anyone want to guess how many Placozoa has? Anyone want to guess? No. Pretty much, huh? I don't want to guess. You don't want to guess? Jeremy, but I want you to guess. Give me a number. Okay, bet. Five. Five? Less than five. You're one. really close? Though. One. One! It is one! There's one type of Placozoa. Isn't that wild? One species, right? Completely the opposite of 5,500. One species, only one. Totally unexpected, right? So, one species, and we're about to see the scientific name for this species. Are you ready? It's pretty fun. I want to make sure I spell it right. It is the Trichoplex adherens. And that is the only species of Placozoa. Very, very long name, right? So as you can see, the second one is in Latin, just like we're saying. This is the genus. Whoops, Trichoplex is the genus. And Inherens is going to be the species, right? So there's an example of a scientific name, just like we talked about earlier, which is very exciting, very awesome. And this is actually... So the only thing this is, it's a single bilayer of a few thousand cells. That's it. It's alive, living. It's an organism. No backbone, right? But it's just kind of a little blob of a bunch of cells, right? Just a little guy. It is actually not yet known how they are related to other oops, early diverging species. So they were some of the uh, earlier animal groups as well, but it's not quite known yet. They haven't quite figured out how they are related to the other ones um, that were earlier as well. It's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting group. There's just one, right? We've got those trichoplax adherens, and that is it. And uh, the way they reproduce, they reproduce by, there's two ways actually they can be dividing into two individuals, individuals, um, or by budding of many multicellular individuals. So two different ways they can reproduce. I'm going to move this a little bit. Um, 
And that is going to be our little section on Placozoa. Lovely little Placozoas. We're going to make the background around this guy. We'll make it light blue. I'm going to sort of, whoops, that's giant. I'm going to try and box off our, uh, our notes right here so that we can keep them separate. As you can see, I am also color coding. So we are able to definitely tell apart the different uh, phylums, or sorry, phyla, the different phyla. Um, of these lovely invertebrates that we are going over. So, Plagazoa we got, we did Porifera, and as you can see, are vastly different, uh, different categories of things, very, very different. Um, I'm going to get rid of this lovely little 95% um, because uh, it's kind of big. I'll leave the little print down here, but I don't, oops, I don't need that big, um, big thing anymore. We're gonna move this guy. We're gonna move him right up here so we can see him, but he's not in our way. There we go. All right, I gotta pick a color for the next one. Let's do, ooh, let's do, um, hmm. we'll do orange for the next one. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let's see, orange. All right, should I slow down? Am I going too fast? How am I doing? Um, I'm also going to ask you guys if your username is not your first name. I'm going to ask that you please change that um, because uh, I need to be able to know who is here. And if your username is not your first name, I'm going to ask that you please change it now. Thank you. Um, back to your real first name so that I know who is here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And we are going to move on to our third type of invertebrate or third phylum of invertebrate which is pretty awesome if i do say so myself and i do because miss bike says a lot of things so the next one starts with a c but when you say it it doesn't start with a c it's got a silent c it's called tenophora tenophora right starts with a t just like pterodactyl has a silent P, Tenophora has a silent C, and the T makes the first sound, right? Tenophora. And that is the next type, and there are a hundred species in this phyla. A hundred species. Pretty reasonable, right? You know? And these guys are called comb jellies. Really, whoops, small type of jellyfish, actually. I mean, they the only type of uh, jelly in this category. There's just a bunch of different kinds of them. Uh, and the other jellyfish are going to be in another category coming a little bit later. So comb jellies are tenophora. And comb and tenophora both start with the C. Uh, so that is one way to remember it. Um, they don't both sound like they start with the C, but they both are spelled with a C beginning. So tenophora, comb jellies, one way to remember it. And they make up most of the ocean's plankton. Plankton. There we go. They make up most of the oceans. And we'll do most of the ocean's plankton, which is pretty neat because that means there's a lot of that. Because there's a lot of plankton um, in our ocean. Uh, zooplankton, phytoplankton, um, bioluminescence is super fun. If you ever get a chance to experience that, I highly recommend um, plankton, right? But we are talking about tenophora. And uh, they actually, like I said, they make up most of the ocean's plankton. And they have, whoops, that's not where I meant to type. They have eight combs um, that propel them through the water. Uh, so these are eight combs. Um, the little organs that propel them through the water. They look like that's what they call them as combs. That's why they're called comb jellies. Uh, they propel them through the water, and when a small animal comes into contact with these guys, um, uh, jelly goes to its uh, their cells, cells burst open. It's very dramatic. They burst open and cover the prey with sticky threads and that is how they carry their prey. Very 
exciting, very dramatic. So when a small animal comes in contact with them, they go, Wah! and then they're caught in the sticky threads, um, kind of like spiderweb sticky thread, but obviously under the water and coming out of um, the cells. That is how they trap their prey. It's a contact attack. Um, only when they're coming into contact with them, they grab them with their sticky threads and it is a surprise. It is a sneak attack for the small animals, very small animals. Um, and that is how they are caught and eaten by the Tenophora, which is uh, very exciting, very dramatic. And um, after this, actually, once you guys have the notes for Tenophora, I'm going to uh, take you guys to my picture file and show you guys some really cool photos of these animals that we've been talking about. So I'm going to make a yellow box around this guy. Oh, yeah, I like that. Okay. Wow. Bam. Hopefully that lines up. We've got the Tanafara, right? Very nice. Um, I'm actually going to try and highlight. We'll see how this goes. Bam! Tanafara. Can I do it with blue while you guys are writing? We'll do blue. Bam! Placozoa. And we'll do purple. Put this guy down here, periphera. Bam! Periphera. Aha. Okay. As you can see, the spike is quickly navigating the whiteboard feature of Zoom. And uh, yes. What's up, Nate? Whoops, sorry. <laughs> what was that? Uh, what's up, Preddy? Pre oh, <laughs> Pretty sure a great question. I don't know. Uh, what if we put prey? Because that makes a lot more oh. sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> yes, please also point out my typos because, um, you know, I'm human. I make those too. Um, not a pretty prey. Cover the prey with sticky threads, right? So, how are we doing on those? Who still needs more time? Anyone? Anyone? Um, let me. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. If you need these notes, we'll be right back up with them. Um, but I have to stop sharing so that I can. Um, so that I can uh, take you guys to my lovely Word doc with all of our lovely photos on it because I enjoy, whoops, hold on, I want to go to the top, hold on, let me see, okay, um, okay, um, we'll be right back on those notes, I'm just pausing for a moment to show you guys um, these photos and then we'll be right back on them, so if you were not done with the notes, we will be right back there in just a second, so. Uh, just hang tight while we look at those lovely photos. So here we go. Here's some periphera. We got a cycon, right? One type of underwater sponge. As you can see, these ones are a little longer tubular, but if you look closely, they still look like sponges when you get up close to them, right? Then we've got spongilla. Yes, that is the real name. Um, and they are a freshwater sponge. Uh, as you can see, they look a little spongy. They kind of look like right algae seaweed of some sort. But they are a type of sponge. Remember with those uh, pores and channels going through them so water can get through. As you can see, they don't move. Um, and then here we go. We've got that lovely spongy. This one isn't in the water, but um, here's a lovely picture. Um, and this one probably looks a little familiar to what you've seen out of the water, right, sponge? Um, your sponges resemble this. And then we're going to go down to the next phylum. This is the lovely Placozoa. As we remember, there's only one species, um, and it's a single layer of cells. Um, Multi-celled, but single layer of cells. It is not the most exciting phylum, but it is one we need to learn about. And if we keep going, here's our Tenophora. We've got these cute little comb jellies. Uh, they're plankton, so they're small, but they uh, look pretty interesting. So here's a little visual for you guys to see the three types of phyla we have talked about. I just want you guys to be able to see it in your head when you're thinking about them. Um, so I'm going to be showing you guys some examples of what they look like. So now I will take you back to my whiteboard um, so we can, we will go back to the whiteboard and my notes I have discovered actually save on the whiteboard. So we go right back to where we were. So if you're still taking notes, you can go back to your notes. Um, thank you for being patient with me. I appreciate you guys being here. Um, and I'm so excited. Nate, do you have another question? No, you don't. Okay. All right. So yeah, so that's where we are. We are going to get started on our fourth species, not species. Sorry. That's the last category. Our fourth 
Hmm. Miss Spike, her words, they're struggling. Her <laughs> fourth phylum uh, of invertebrates that we are looking at today. Now that one is called, Yeah, this is another one. Um, oh wait, what color should I make this? We are gonna make this one, hmm, actually I'll make it purple because I do like purple and I haven't typed in purple yet. This one is called Nidaria. Nidaria, right? Ni. Or sorry, it's Nidaria. Nidar, uh, e, uh, Nidaria. Just so you know how to pronounce it. And there are ten thousand species of this one. Whoops, ten thousand. This one is zero. Ten thousand species of Nidar, Nidaria. Hmm, gotta say it right. That's why I wrote it up. So I remembered to say it right. Nidaria has ten thousand species in it. That is the most yet, isn't it? That is a lot of species. And it's actually not the most species we are going to uncover this week. There's one with thousands more. So stay tuned for that. But we will not get to that today. We're doing Nidaria, which are pretty cool. They include, oh, that's not right. I want to be down here. They include jellies, corals, and hydras. Now, when you think hydra, it is not that big three-headed monster, um, nor is it that uh, organization from a Marvel movie. Hydra is actually um, a small uh, organization, not organization, hmm, organism <laughs> uh, that live in fresh water, and they are native to temperate and um, more tropical regions. So they are just really small organisms in fresh water. Um, they are called hydras because hydro water, right? So they live in the fresh water, um, and they are Nidaria. So Nidarias, they have a single opening Oops. Um, that serves, oh, hold on, let me plug in my computer real quick. Um, they have a single opening that serves um, basically both purposes, right? A lot of animals have two openings, serves as a mouth and, also, uh, and an anus as well. So it serves both purposes, um, one opening in a Nidaria, um, and it serves both purposes, right? Bringing in and also waste management. It handles both ends of uh, the production, right? The, the way that an organism needs to work. They also, um, yeah, that's all I have on them actually. So there's a lot of night area um, and we are going to, uh, what color should I make this guy? I'm gonna make him a little shorter. And I'm going to cover him with, hmm. let's do, we'll do dark green. Actually, we'll do light green. How about that? There we go. Just to box off our notes. There we go, right? So we've got that lovely Nidaria with that one opening that serves both purposes that we know, 10,000 species, which is the most we're talking about today, but not the most we're talking about all week. I'll give you guys a minute to get these notes down. And then once we are um, clear on that, then I will show you a picture of some Nidaria. Well, let me do that a little better. We're gonna highlight that. I like to highlight my phylum names and then the rest are gonna be in the color. That way we are color coded. We know what we're talking about. We can keep our notes separate and legible and clear and uh, it is going to be pretty easy to do our homework with these notes. So, I um, guess I'll move this guy so we don't forget 95% of animal species are invertebrates. Um, that might be something to have in your notes if you don't have that now, just a hint, um, might be helpful. So, um, I will show you a picture real quick and then I will bring you right back to the notes. So if you're still writing this down, do not worry, we will be right back um, to these notes. I am not erasing them. We are not going anywhere except to look at some Nidaria. Let's see if we scroll. Nidaria. So here's a hydra, like I said, little freshwater organism. Loves temperate and tropical regions, right? Likes that warm water. Well, if it were working, that would be nice. Um, and if we keep going, here's a jelly, right? We know those, we know those, we love those. Jellyfish, don't get stung, right? And we've got some nice coral here. Beautiful, very diverse assortment of coral. And down here, we've got a sea anemone, which is also Nidaria. So here's just some visuals, what we're thinking about when we're thinking about Nidaria, right? 
um, this is what we are looking at. So that was just a visual for you guys. I like to show you guys pictures as well. So it's not just sort of abstract language. Um, and I will take us back to our whiteboard so that we can continue taking our notes. So uh, today we went over the levels of classification. There are seven. Um, after that, we started talking about invertebrates, all of the different phyla of invertebrates. We got the porifera, which is over 5,000 species. We got the Plagozoa, which is just one. And we've got our Tenophora, Silent Sea, with 100 species, which are little comb jellies, super cute little plankton. And then our Cnidaria, our 10,000 species, which include a lot of different things we're familiar with, most of us, um, right? Other jellyfish, coral, which we know, hydras, which um, some of us may have known, but some of us may have learned. Um, we learned that 95% of animal species are invertebrates, which is a lot, right? Because when you think of animals, your first thought is an invertebrate, right? You think, oh, an animal, tiger, dog, cat, monkey, right? But um, those are just the more common ones. A lot of the invertebrate species are really small or really unusual or the parasites, right? Things that you don't see face to face, you don't come face to face with every day. Um, and so that is super cool that we are able to learn about them. I am able to show you guys visuals um, and we we're able to work together on this. So um, I, uh, does anyone have any questions before I check your notes? No, are we good? Awesome. You guys have been awesome today. Thank you very much. If you are writing handwritten notes, I'm going to ask that you please hold them up to the screen. And if I do not see handwritten notes held up to the screen, um, I'm going to assume that you're going to email them to me. Ooh, let me um, put them in the chat, my email, um, so you guys can see. Hang on. Keep your notes up there. Um, let's see. Uh, this is my email. If you need anything, you are welcome to email me um, with any questions. Like I said, check the Google Classroom for your assignment. I am expecting that by Sunday evening uh, to be turned in. All right, I got Lydia's. Uh, all right, M, good. Riley, uh, Sydney, Ryan, thank you. Maisie, do you have handwritten notes? Or are they on your computer? Awesome, Maisie, good. Jeremy? Awesome, Nate, thank you. Lily, I got you. Wesley, Miles, thank you. Jaden, awesome. Uh, Fiona, do you have notes? All right, Ice, thank you. Uh, Fiona and Nick, you guys have notes for me? Are you gonna email them? Nick, thank you. Uh, all right. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining me for Science with Miss Bike, Biology Edition. Um, you guys have been awesome. Thank you, thank you. I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow, second block for Science. We will continue going over lots of different invertebrates. Um, yes, yeah, you, who needs to see my whiteboard again? Let me put it back up there. Um, you guys have been awesome. I love having you in class. Middle School Science is actually really fun to teach and um, it's great to see you guys lovely faces every day. So I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Enjoy your last two classes. Uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, awesome. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. OK. Bye. <laughs> awesome. There we go.